This is the IMDb Show presented by our friends at Microsoft Surface. This is special. Ralph Macchio, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. Woo! How are you? Hey, I'm great. I'm great. Uh, let's get into it. 35 years ago, The Karate Kid hits theaters, right? One of the biggest movies of the year. Take me back. What was that like and how big was this? Well, it was, um, you know, I had heard that the movie was good <laughs> right. when they were cutting it together. Um, I was hearing from uh, that the, it was testing well, which is a big thing that they, they do. They get back to you that, you know, it's testing well. I knew there was, um, there was concern about the running time. Uh, it was over two hours. And I think the studio at the time was wanted to keep this so they could screen it every two hours. So at one point they were deciding whether they would cut out the whole Miyagi drunk scene where he learned, where Daniel learns yeah, about uh, the World War II and His the internment camps, yeah, yeah. all this stuff. It's like, how do you cut that out of this movie? Um, and I hadn't seen it yet, but I know that those discussions were going on. And, uh, and I'm part of the, um, it was the concept that it stopped the story. You're right at the point of the climactic scene, and then you stop the story. The, there, so on paper, by the numbers, it might have been the right thing to do. to do. It was totally the yeah. wrong thing to do. Because what it did, it just added so much depth to the characters, to the Miyagi character, to the handing the baton, to LaRusso training himself and carrying on from what he learned from mm -hmm. his master, all those things. I think after alluding to the fact, say how it was testing well, I think as soon as they tested it, uh, then everybody everybody shut up. It was the studio and the editor. And ultimately, um, I think it was that scene that actually got him nominated. Yes, it did. If you really it did. look I mean, at that, that scene, was one. He was I mean, it was, there's many reasons he was nominated for best supporting actor, but that was one of them. I saw the film for the first time at a, um, a sneak preview in New York, the Baronet uh -huh. Theater on like Second Avenue. It was a month before it came out. Uh, it was an out-of-body experience to be at the back of this packed uh, theater and watching everyone sort of take every turn with this kid. I just turned out to be that kid. Right. And, and rooting all those setups that were paying off and show me paint the fence, show me sand the floor, and, and the cheers and the, the hugs and the, you know, people just, uh, you know, we're out in the street doing the crane kick on For sure. All on, day. on second. Yeah, the amount of people that have concussions. Right, right, to exactly. You. Yeah, and Jerry Russo. Weintraub, uh, the producer, leaned over to me and said, "You know, we're going to be making a couple of these." Oh wow! It was that day when he, he just saw someone six or someone is seventy six. That's doing a true the legend, crane right trick. there. Um, Crazy time. You know, I, it was a strange time. It was a funny time for movies. When you think of, I did some research. The merch that came out. Uh huh. Yeah, how extreme did the merchandising go? Like, would you remember? Well, it was, was with the second. It was with the yeah, sequel. The no what one knew when we made the first one. one. The weird, well, I mean, uh, you know, the action figure with karate chop action, <laughs> the lunch boxes, um, the, the little, uh, um, the village, the Domi village of Karate Kid Part <laughs> right. 2, you get all the characters, and it's just like a setup of, uh, of plastic uh -huh. uh, walls, and then you would move the parts around. What, what do you do? Like say, hey, Mr. Miyagi, I <laughs> want to go for a I walk I think that's now. exactly what people <laughs> would have did. So, uh, you know, great. not many actors get to revisit a character 35 years later, mm -hmm. you had to face that with Cobra Kai, mm -hmm. brand new TV show, which I've told you before, I love this show. Uh, talk you. to me about the acting process. How do you revisit taking Daniel LaRusso from Karate Kid to Karate Man? How do you, how do you evolve that character? Well, it's, it's interesting. It's a, it's a great question because I put a decent amount of pressure on myself um, for that for, uh, and prep to shoot Cobra Kai. And at the end of the day, I dropped it, I let it all fall away. Part of it was uh, discussing it with the creators of the show, John Hurwitz, Hayden Slosberg, and, and, uh, and Josh Heal. Yeah. They're great. I mean, they are the, the it is their, the Cobra Kai is their vision. Um, and that's, and in essence, it was that pitch, who they were, their passion, the belief that they are the fans that want to make the show for the fans is why I jumped on after saying no for 30 years because everyone had their pitch. Did, on, you like, got pitched you know, a ton? Like crazy. Like what, just, and just, what you was know. the most bizarre pitch you got? What if Rocky Balboa <laughs> was related to Daniel LaRusso and they both had kids and they, you know, that one. Really? That was my favorite. By the way, it doesn't sound it's like that. That all like sounds good. All the executives never. lean forward and they go, yeah. they go like this and they go, no, no, it wouldn't work. How are you uh, going to do that? Gonna... <laughs> but what was it about this one? This like, one. What was it? You must have had hesitations throughout all I the years. I, I did on the day and when we were shooting and even before it came out and I still... Even now, going into season three, there's still places I want to go further. There's still, I don't know, 
and I just trust them because they've earned it, and they're such great collaborators. But it's um, what were you hesitant about? Um, just tainting the legacy of, of that character, and it's become the the fans' movie right. worldwide. So so it was. Um, it, sometimes it's better to not go back to that well, even though you think there might be water in it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but in this case, it was, I come up really intelligent right now. Because <laughs> Cobra Kai is such a big uh, hit and then pleasing uh, so, many, so many fans of all different ages and bringing a new audience to it. But in answer to your question, did I, and I'm forgetting your question right now, why oh, playing the, the, uh, the, the karate man, uh -huh. the older yeah, yeah, version? getting there. I approached it at the end of the day through, the, I was saying, how am I going to do this? What is, where has he been? What is it really? Because it's still fan fiction. They're still writing their version of where LaRusso is, not necessarily what I would have come up with, but I trust that. And um, so in essence, what I've chosen to do is sort of approach it the same way I did back in 1983, sort of bring my East Coast kind of... Uh, um, my East Coast-ness, right. me from Long Island, LaRusso uh -huh. from Newark, New Jersey. Yeah. Um, uh, earnestness, honesty, good-heartedness, but amping up his feisty sort of knee-jerk temper, which was part of LaRusso. Right. And the, the difference between then and now is life has happened, wisdom has happened, family has happened, success has happened in Ralph's life as well as LaRusso's, even though they're different. I've been married for 30-something yeah. years. Uh, LaRusso's been married. He's got two kids. Um, he has successful business, um, ups and downs in his life, as I have had. I've had success so I've, uh, and, and difficulties. You know, so I've used all the life that's taken place in the 30 years and just added that to the kid that I played back in 83. What's an interesting thing, you know, the writers write the character, but you actually get to yeah. drizzle your special magic all over it. So tell me, what's something that you created for the backstory that we'd be surprised to find out? Well, I mean, I'm still looking for some of that going forward. Uh -huh. I mean, there's there's been a lot, there's so much plot in, in these first two seasons of Cobra Kai that, and, and only so much real estate and being in half hour episodes or- Which I love, by the way. Yeah, it's a great, yeah. it, easily digestible and to the point where mm -hmm. even when you're full, you keep wanting to eat. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> they're, know. they're five hour movies and that's how we shoot them and uh, cut up into 10 half hour parts. So there's, I mean, uh, well, the most important thing uh, that was part of this for me was making sure the, the essence of Miyagi and that character and that void in Daniel's life is present and what and that that's sprinkled throughout the series. And so that was something that I was steadfast on before I agreed to come on board. Um, and I needed to hear and know that that was going to be part of the story and that since he's been gone, which has been eight years narrative wise, um, that LaRusso has maybe lost some of his balance and needed to go back and needed to bring martial arts in. It's a missing piece and, and, and he needs to recalibrate himself. And that was part of what we discussed and what was important. And even going forward, now if you've seen season two, I don't want to give any spoilers away. I if you have. haven't seen it, you have to get out and do it right I now. I haven't, it's brilliant. So it goes to a place that now going forward in season three, we really have to recalibrate certain right. things. And and so I'm looking forward to some of the deeper dives and learning something that maybe 15 years ago happened to LaRusso that we don't even know right. about. And so those conversations are happening now, just like they are for Johnny Lawrence and even the young cast in the show that there's so many great compelling characters throughout. You know, it's, it's an emotional show to watch mm -hmm. for me because I grew up watching The right. Karate Kid, the original. So like whoever, you know, who Mr. Miyagi was for you. I was watching that thinking I was Daniel LaRusso right. in a very strange way, but you know what I'm saying? You learn from that guy. Tell me something, when I, when I say these words to you, the first thing that comes to your head, right? Your favorite moment hanging out and laughing with Pat Morita. Um, favorite, there's so many. Uh, the favorite moment was his ability to do a scene like that scene I mentioned, alluded to earlier, yeah. the drunk scene, where he was, you know, literally uh -huh. crying and uh, going over losing his wife and child mm -hmm. to uh, complications of childbirth, and, and he learns of this hardship in his life. And they cut, and he'd just run comic fart jokes and <laughs> stuff, and you'd just be able to do that and then snap back in. 
I just way, still to this day, way jealous of that. And I'm, the first thing that comes to your head, most emotional moment being on set of Cobra Kai, revisiting you know, some of those old scenes. Which bit was special for you? The most special, there's two. One, the first scene I played with Zapka, Billy yeah. Zapka uh, in the dojo at the mm -hmm. end of episode two when we come face to face. That was my first time shooting LaRusso in 35, 34 years. And the first time playing opposite him where he just wasn't kicking my ass. Okay, so what so, did that feel like? What was going through your it head? It was, um, you know, it was, First of all, everyone on the set was just like, they were like had popcorn and they were just, you know, it was it's such a great moment for these writers and uh -huh. the crew. For us, there was a piece of what has kissed both this movie, The Karate Kid, and this series. Something that is just, it's the lightning in a bottle where Billy and I had a chemistry that and this rivalry and had such depth in between the perform in the silences that I wasn't expecting and he wasn't expecting that was just there. It almost seems like it came from, you know, you can make a, z Diane Lane once said this to me after I congratulated her on being nominated for, um, uh, I'm blanking on the name of the movie right now, just, just old man brain. Okay. But uh, she said, listen, if I knew how to make a hit, I'd do more of them. And it's true, you could do, put all the right puzzle pieces together and it doesn't necessarily mean that magic's gonna happen. And it happened with the Karate Kid film and it's happening with Cobra Kai. And that moment with playing that first scene with, with Billy was really, it's like, wow, we have something we didn't even know we had in these two characters. It was like yesterday, just more wrinkles and a little less hair. Did you guys, did you guys, but first of all, I'm not gonna let you get away with that stuff because you both look fantastic. Oh, good. But, because you were like, you know, when I remember probably the most, well, I don't remember but from research, the most asked question you got when you were doing Karate Kid was how old are you really? Yeah, right, right. right? Because right. you look so young. Yeah, and I carry the kid thing. The kid thing, you're paying what, a 16 year old, but you're right. actually 20 years old I played old at 16 the time. for 35 years. For 35 years? Yes. Kid, he never actually I graduated never. or anything. <laughs> no, like, he never. just took vacations never. and came back, same age all the way it's through. It's crazy. The other thing, the other thing I just want to uh, mention this is play in season two going to Miyagi's house yeah. and playing those scenes as the mentor and uh, and uh, and not totally succeeding all the time. Just because you have knowledge of a subject doesn't necessarily mean you know how to teach it. Right. And, uh, and those hurdles for LaRusso, but walking on that set that first day and it was twofold. One, I'm not, you know, the kid anymore. So it was that. Those years are gone. John Avelson's no longer with us. Jerry Weintraub, Pat Morita's no longer with us. And being on that set and knowing that's where all that magic happened, even though it's a different reconstructed set. And uh, I got very emotional for, you know, about a half hour. I was all like in my throat like this. It took me back to that time. And when I was that time, I didn't know the magic that was being created. Right. So now I have that. And then going back to it, it was really quiet. And then I just shook it off, went back to my trailer, got dressed, and, and it was about shooting Cobra Kai. It was not about living in the past. But it's kind of sweet. And then I think it resonates in the show. The show, what certainly resonates to me is um, finding a new deeper dive and a new appreciation for the original story. Mm -hmm. There's a perspective flip there. Yeah. One of my favorite moments is the moments where you sit down with Johnny Lawrence, um, Billy Zavka, yeah. and you guys talk about how, you know, in his mind, Daniel LaRusso is the right. bad guy. You came to my town, hit on my girl, mm -hmm. and you're the bad guy. It's perspective flip, yep. But also the perspective flip where now you're giving the advice. Yeah. You're hearing that you're basically looking at yourself playing it back. Right. Is that, looking back at it, is that a very, it's a very, you know, it's not many actors get that opportunity, but how do you wrap your mind around it's that? Gr it's great. Listen, the scenes with, with uh, Zapka and I, when they're getting along after a couple of drinks, are some of my favorite scenes in, in both season one and two. And uh, it keeps that ball in the air. I call it the Ross and Rachel of our, our Wait, show, what? you know? What do you well, mean? Well, because if they fight and it, it's the end all be all, it's kind of, it's you over. don't want that, but you uh -huh. want tastes of it, yeah. right? So, but but were they on a break? Uh, um, well, <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's it's kind of fun to watch them get along and yeah. yet go at each other, go at each other. But uh, play, taking the Miyagi isms and then making it Larusso isms in his way, which is part of the learning curve for him trying to. Uh, 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 you know, uh, preach the gospel of positive martial arts as opposed to the negative, no mercy martial arts is is, is challenging and uh, enjoyable. My final question is: I, I think you, I think everyone get a kick out of this. Everyone always comes to you at these big conventions and tells you their favorite moment in all the movies. Mm -hmm. 
I'd love to know, what was your favorite moment in all of the Karate Kid movies? Oh my gosh. It's from the original film. My favorite moment, it's, it, you know, some will find it lame, uh, but it's just loaded with uh, that soulful magic that I mentioned. It's the, there's two. I gotta go with go two. Go on, go on. I'll give you two. I'll give you what I was is, is say. The first one is the, the moment where LaRusso gets the car. And he looks at Miyagi and then back to the car. And he, he almost struggles to say it, but then he has to say it. And it's so um, uh, ahead of his years to just say, you're the best friend I ever had. It's just so simple mm -hmm. and so sweet. And when he says, you're pretty OK, too. That is the heart and soul with ground. That's the tent pole of that, that film. On top of that, uh, I would say the payoff scene, show me paint the fence, show me sand the floor, when the kid realizes all this work is paying off and he has this, this gift of the human right. Yoda just handed him the greatest uh, gift in martial arts. Those are, you know, that's Robert Kamen's writing and John Adelson's direction and, and uh, here we are today and it makes, it makes it, all those pieces are woven into the Cobra Kai series amidst the uh, strike first, strike hard and no mercy. Right there. Beautifully told. All right, we do this with every guest that walks in here. And this one I'm particularly excited for with you. Okay. What are you watching at home? Um, at home right now, I just finished watching the second season of Barry. Yes. Which is uh, 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 fantastic. And, uh, and Henry Winkler, I've met uh, more than a handful of times. You worked with him in Happy Days. I'm well, yeah, kidding. That's I'm right. joking. Right. <laughs> I'm not touching mother father. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Um, he's, I, I, it was funny. You often get described as the nicest guy in Hollywood. But yeah, yeah. But now, now Henry, <laughs> but Henry, not, Henry's always had right. that. I just can't appear with Henry. Uh, he's the greatest guy. And I'm so happy for him and, and what they're doing and what Bill Hader's doing with the, the script and the dark twistedness. And the, the, I, I love the show. Um, just started watching Big Little Lies, second season. You're in it? Okay, you, um, you so, love that um, show, season yeah, two? Yeah, I mean, the, the season two, I just I just watched the, the first episode on, on my phone yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, um, what do you love about that show? Just the vibe, you know, the subject matters it takes, obviously the level of talent, the direction of season one. He's not directing season two, but I'm just, you know, I... And now having, you know, you, you throw in Meryl Streep, it's it's kind of the creme of the... It's the top, top shelf, so... Um, that and uh, and the other day, Apocalypse Now was on, and uh, just because it popped into my head, and that's one directed by Coppola, uh, who I got to work with in The Outsiders. Yeah. I could, uh, Apocalypse is, you know, it, I wouldn't pick it as my favorite movie of all time, but I can't turn it off. Just visually, just that time essence of that time, they, um, I just can't. It's just spec the cinema, cinematography, and just the themes. Um, and knowing Coppola and what they went through to make it over four years' time and Martin Sheen's heart attack and all this stuff, I guess from knowing that, it's more fascinating to me. For sure. And uh, I'm glad I wasn't, you know, investing into it. You all know it's <laughs> fascinating for me getting to sit here with you. These awesome, are like one man. of those moments where I really love doing what I do. Listen, Ralph Macho, thank you so much for coming by the show. Thank it's a real you. pleasure. Great to be an here. honor to meet you, Thanks. all right? Thank you very much.